Drugs policy has been failing for decades. We need fresh thinking and a new approach. Now, those aren't my words, but the words of the Prime Minister David Cameron back in 2005, when he was a contender for the leadership of the Conservative Party. At that time, he also said it would be disappointing if radical options on the law on cannabis were not looked at. Now, since then, he has very sadly reversed his position almost 180 degrees and done what sadly all too many politicians do when they've secured power, ignore the evidence and in the face of what can be a hostile media environment, retreat to the status quo. As a result of a very, very large um, quarter of a million signature public petition, um, our government um, is having to debate whether or not cannabis should be legalised within the UK. So the difference between the previous debate that happened under Caroline Lucas from the Green Party and today's debate is quite simple. Caroline Lucas's was about changing our actual drug policy itself, which is obviously quite antiquated and out of date. Um, however, today's debate is specifically about the legalisation of cannabis. So whether it should be legalised, what are the pros and cons of that, and whether or not this should actually be put forward for a motion for discussion to be introduced into law. It's very, very unlikely, but if it was decided that this was a motion that needed further debate and to be enacted as a law, it would be scheduled for a hearing in the main chamber, upon which point, as like with a normal uh, law or bill, it will be put through the normal parliamentary process, being approved by um, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Although it is possible that tomorrow we could wake up uh, with a, uh, the possibility of new cannabis laws, that's probably not going to happen. But there are important principles uh, and benefits of this debate taking place. For a start, it's a massive, massive um, achievement to actually have such a debate scheduled and heard in the main chamber. That has never ever been dis um, discussed there by anybody by, from, for any drug. So that in itself is a large achievement. Um, however, it also should be noted that anything that's mentioned within the parliamentary debate is entered into the annals of parliament, which means it can be called on at any time in the future. So the fact that this is, has been discussed now and that there's information and facts that are being recorded, they can then be used later on when discussing items of this matter in future at any point in history, which is, which is a massive benefit. One of the illustrations I'd like to give before we start is the way the government, all governments, have handled this matter over the years. And it's uh, typified by the response that we've had to what is a thunderously eloquent petition of 220,000 people, but the response from the government has been trite has been something that could have been written 20 years ago and doesn't live up to the knowledge and experience and the great work that's been done, particularly in the last 20 years, the serious case that's been put for decriminalising cannabis. Hi, my name's Tom Lloyd. I'm a former Chief Constable and uh, I was recently elected to be Chairman of the National Cannabis Coalition. Um, we're just uh, at the early stages of getting organised and uh, we're uh, like an umbrella organisation for a lot of the activism groups around cannabis drug law reform. Um, what we want to happen is legal access uh, to cannabis for all adults and legal access to cannabis for all for medicinal purposes. And there are a, a range of groups involved. Um, uh, some of them are um, arguing that anybody ought to be able to have access to, uh, to cannabis for whatever purpose they choose, whether that's spiritual, whether it's just for relaxation. And importantly, there are a large group of people in this country, represented by the United Patients Alliance, who argue that it's entirely wrong uh, for uh, medical cannabis patients to be prosecuted for um, growing their own uh, product uh, as the best possible treatment um, for whatever serious condition they may have. Uh, for example, multiple sclerosis or Crohn's disease and many other uh, long-term debilitating and painful conditions. And certainly as a former police officer, I think it's abhorrent. In fact, as a citizen of this country, I think it's abhorrent that the police will go and kick down the doors of somebody who's growing their own cannabis as the best possible treatment. And in so doing, they're actually avoiding engaging with the criminal market. I mean, there are some simple questions you need to ask yourself. Do you want gangsters to be making billions of pounds 
out of the illicit market? Do you want cannabis to be of unknown strength and purity because the gangsters are in charge? Do you want our children to be much more vulnerable to being sold cannabis because the gangsters only think about the profit? Well, the answer for me, and I think for every right-thinking person, is no, we don't want that to happen. What we actually want is to wrestle control back from the gangsters and bring it under regulation where necessary, so if people want to buy it, they can do so from a regulated outlet, and to give people the freedom and the opportunity to produce their own cannabis at home, as long as they're not annoying anybody else, without fear of being prosecuted. But the Washington... Um Institute, the Washington State Institute for Public Policy, said only last month that it's too early to decide whether what's going on there is going to work. And they think it won't happen until at least 2017, is the evidence I have before me. There's always going to be one expert in one part of the world saying one thing, and another expert in another world saying another thing, not least because there will be such dice views. But we have to listen to what goes on and use it as an evidence base, which is what was being asked for earlier on. Thank, thank you for being here. Thank you for showing your support. There's a lot of people out there that can't be here today because they're too ill. There's a lot of people out there that can't be here today because that would be there taking too many, too many risks. There's lots and lots of people that are helping people at the moment and they are the unsung heroes of this movement. There's people out there providing cannabis oil for free to patients. And they are the unsung heroes of this movement, and they are who we need to be celebrating. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know why I'm why I'm here. To be honest, I don't know why I why I stand here and why I do this. Because, oh yeah, I do it because I care. But I'm fed up of it. I'm so fed up of fighting. I am done with fighting. I don't want to fight this anymore. I don't want them to deny me. Who are they? They're trying to tell me, they are trying to tell me that my experience is wrong. Fuck them! They're trying to tell me that when I'm in pain and I consume cannabis and it goes away, they're trying to tell me I'm lying. They're trying to tell me that I would ruin my entire life and give it up for something that wasn't real. They're trying to tell all of you that. Are you going to take this? Are we having this? No. Who are they? Who are they? They don't know. They don't have the experience that we have. And this is why we must stand up. This is why we must continue to stand up because this is the right thing to do. This is the right thing to do. What we are all doing here today is the right thing to do. And I do get emotional about it. Because this is my life. This is your life. This is all of our lives. This isn't about cannabis. This isn't about cannabis at all. This is about our rights to live the life that we deserve. The life that we want to live. No more government, only Edwin. Edwin is human. We have a great responsibility to stand up for those that have no voice. There's people in pain, there's people that are dying, there's people that are going to die because of them, because they won't change their minds. So I'm John Liebling, I'm political director of United Patients Alliance, and we are here today uh, because in around about half an hour at 4.30, um, there will be a debate in the House of Commons in Westminster Hall on the legalisation of cannabis. Um, we're here today um, in order to let our MPs know um, that there's plenty of people who are in support of a change in the law, um, but specifically with the United Patients Alliance, we're very much focusing on the medical aspect of the overall argument. Um, we represent around about 8,500 patients in the UK so far, and we estimate that there are approximately one million uh, cannabis patients who are consuming cannabis now for different medical reasons. We have patients with cancer, with multiple sclerosis, with epilepsy, with PTSD, with Crohn's, with uh, irritable bowel disease, with anxiety and depression. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And uh, 
all of these people, because all of the people in United Patients Alliance are medical cannabis patients. And we have all found that cannabis is superior in terms of its ability to treat our symptoms, whatever they happen to be, um, with less side effects. Um, and in many cases, with the blessing of their doctors. And, uh, and so there's one argument, which is around the legalization of cannabis um, for recreational for use and, and in fact for any use. And we support that. However, to, uh, to stop medical cannabis patients, to stop patients from using a medicine that helps them with their symptoms and gives them a better life is frankly criminal and it has to stop now. I wonder when, whether when he was there he enjoyed a pint uh, in one of the many Norfolk Broad pubs. Uh, there is very clear evidence that uh, alcohol is more dangerous than cannabis. It's overwhelming the evidence. Can he just explain, can he give any explanation as to why it makes sense for that more dangerous product to be legal and for a less dangerous product to be illegal? I'm not actually convinced on the evidence that cannabis in certain people is less dangerous. But I would say that if, and as it was said earlier on the debate, is where would we start from today with alcohol policy and, and tobacco policy than where we are today? Of course we wouldn't. And I think I, and I accept that point. But I, in conclusion, I, I'm committed to working with other departments and whoever else wants to work with us to make sure that in the 21st century, where this can be helpful through the pharmaceuticals, we will try and make sure that happens. Let's look at the research, let's look at work I can see to do, which is what I'm committed to do. And with that, I think it's been enormously useful, Mrs Gillen, that we've had a debate, but my position is I cannot support the petition. And the great myth that's perpetrated is that if you ban something, people don't use it. If you make something illegal, it stops being used. When the reverse is true, the prohibition that we introduced in 1971 has been a continuing disaster. We've heard two me medical evidence from the same source, and we, we have to take that seriously, of course. But it's not related, uh, I'm afraid, in very little uh, percentages that we have to the, the extent of the danger. And I remind you of what Dr. Nutt said, that you'd have to get rid of cannabis in the cases of 5,000 people to stop one case of psychosis. Now, so that still makes it a serious problem. But the great lesson of uh, prohibition is that people are suffering greatly for it, people have been criminalized, and their lives have been ruined. And I only have two minutes. And to make this final point, of all those, and there are tens of thousands of them, who have written to us in passion letters about their suffering and saying in order uh, to get their drug of choice, and it's a natural substance, not a chemical one like Satovix, the natural form of cannabis which had been used for 5,000 years without any a serious uh, side effect. They want the government to move it uh, from schedule, schedule one to schedule two. Simple, could be done, just been done in 23 states in America without any harm. And I would beg the government to look again at the evidence to rescue those sufferers from MS, to rescue them from their bed of thistles.